Hey everybody, welcome back to Watch and Carry. We've got another customer build today on this uh, Casio. The one we're working on is the AE1200WH-1AVCF. Very similar to the classic World Time in silver, but this one comes on the uh, resin bracelet and has that black finish. So for this particular mod, the customer is going to want a couple of things. They want a negative display conversion here to the round analog clock. And then to the rest of the display, he's going to want a, a yellow filter insert. So that's going to involve doing a little bit of cutting into the factory polarizing uh, film to uh, replace this and make it into negative and then cutting out a filter and inserting that uh, into the uh, rest of the masking there. So I want to thank Jose again for the opportunity to work on this for him. And we're going to go ahead and get started here by uh, disassembling the watch. So you want to make sure that you have a nice soft surface to work on. This is a silicone soldering mat so it doesn't scratch, especially on these Casios. These are very uh, easy to scratch. So I would even recommend putting a piece of painter's tape over your uh, watch glass when you're working on it. I have the uh, factory um, piece of uh, plastic here that sticks to the front. So I'm just going to leave that on for protection. We're going to undo the strap and then we've got these uh, four screws in the back. So this watch is brand new and uh, in traditional um, Casio packaging you're going to usually have some of this um, residue here on the back that will usually rub off. You can just take a little bit of alcohol, put it to a microfiber cloth and rub that off. Also expect to have some superficial scratches that will not be removed by uh, traditional means. So that's just to be expected on these Casios. So I'm going to clean that up for him once I'm done because I'll probably get fingerprints on that throughout this project. Uh, so you'll take a uh, Phillips here and get these four screws off. These are all the same pitch, so uh, completely interchangeable. If you have the uh, silver version of this watch, the uh, World Time with the stainless steel bracelet, uh, this type of mod will still apply. Exact same dimensions, the only difference is the color and the uh, bracelet uh, material. And I believe I have a video on my channel of me doing the same exact mod to the stainless steel version. So here's that case back. Okay, we're going to set this off. And what I'd like to do is um, put my parts from left to right as I'm taking them off. So that way I do the reverse when it comes to reassembly. Also just keeps it a little bit easier for you guys to follow along with. Next thing I like to do is take off the O-ring here. You can probably leave this on. I kind of like to take it off because um, in the chance that it gets removed by accident by you, you can follow along how to put it back. You'll notice there's a little nub here at the top that indicates the, that indicates the uh, 12 o'clock position. And when you remove that O-ring, you want to be really gentle. You don't want to just kind of yank it out because the uh, oil from the factory can cause it to stick. And as you yank, you're actually stretching that O-ring slightly. And then when it comes to reassembly, it's going to be near impossible to put it back because you've stretched that O-ring. So be very gentle when removing that. Okay, next we have the module here. This is the 12, this is the six o'clock position. So you can go to either 12 or six. You're gonna take a small uh, tool here. I just have a toothpick with a nice rounded tip at the end to make it more comfortable to use. I'm gonna pry up gently on that module and just remove that out. You also have the masking here. What I recommend you do is just flip this over and dump that out. And then take your case back and immediately replace that just to limit the amount of dust that's going in there. And then we will uh, set this off to the side. Okay, let's uh, get our workspace here a little bit organized again. So we got that O-ring over there, we've got our masking, and then we've got our module. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is uh, go to the module and the masking. Now you have two ways about doing this particular mod. You can go ahead and actually just 
remove the entire factor, factory polarizing film that's covering uh, this part right here. And then when it comes to replacing, you can just replace the parts that you need and make them into either positive or negative. That's especially useful for those of you that kind of want to mix and match your positive and negative displays. There's some people out there that really like to have this colored and then the map uh, normal positive and then this top and this bottom negative and so forth. So by just taking it off and then cutting the new polarizing film to put it where you want it, that makes it a little bit easier. In this case, I'm going to just leave the factory polarizing film on for this section because we're not converting that to negative. It's staying positive. And then I'm going to go ahead and just remove this tiny section here, which is going to require me cutting into it. It ends up being a little bit more uh, work when you do it this way, because removing part of the factory polarizing film is uh, harder, in my experience, than removing the entire thing and just replacing what you need. Uh, but I just like to do it this way, just um, um, try to, a different approach so that way you guys have different options here. So the trick here is how do we know what exactly to um, cut off and what to keep in? So usually what I like to do is just kind of eyeball it here. I'll take a masking and put it right back over the uh, module there. And I'll take a, a fine tip Sharpie here, like so. Okay, the masking kind of sits right on top of that module, you'll feel it kind of grip when it's in the proper position, okay? And then what I'll usually do here is just kind of take my Sharpie, kind of hover it right over that little corner, that little circle. Let's zoom in a little bit more so you can see. How do I dial down the brightness here? All right, there we go. So I'll kind of hover over that little circle right there. I'm not touching it, just hovering over it, making sure my masking's lined up. And then I'll just kind of remove the masking carefully without touching the module underneath. Okay, and then just put a little circle like that, little dot. And then I'll go ahead and just replace the masking here and just double check to make sure that that um, piece of plastic there is covering up that circle, right? So I don't want that dot to be too far this way, obviously, and I don't want it to be too far that way. I shouldn't see it once I put the masking back. So that looks to be pretty much um, in the middle there. And then what I'll do is I'll just draw, you know, freehand, because it's, it's a very short distance here. You can get a ruler if you're a little bit shaky. I'll go ahead and just take that Sharpie line, or take that dot, and then just draw a line going um, straight up from that. So kind of, well, not quite straight. A little bit to the right of that. And then I'll do another one here from the bottom and do it like so. Okay. And I'll go ahead and take my masking again, kind of cover that up. And I'm going to check for these two lines to make sure that they're also being covered properly. Okay. Like that. So again, you kind of want to eyeball it, make sure that that line is kind of more or less being hidden by this piece of plastic here, and then check that line and make sure that it's being hidden by that plastic there. Now again, this was just very, you know, offhand, not using a ruler, not measuring. So it may not be how you want to do it if you want to be extremely precise. I've done this mod so many times that I kind of feel already comfortable doing that. Um, if you really want to be precise, you want to go ahead and just leave the masking on here, take some measurements with a ruler, transfer those measurements to the screen and then mark out what you need to do. There's there's no wrong way to do it. Worse comes to worse, if uh, my Sharpie mark was visible, I can just go ahead and remove the whole polarizing film if I screwed up and just replace it with brand new polarizing film. So that's, that's how I feel comfortable doing that right there. Now, one important thing to note here is uh, right towards the bottom, let's say your, uh, your corner of this uh, square you've kind of drawn out, let's say the corner actually gets really close to this tip right here. Okay, you really wanna make sure you're not too close to that because this is not really a 90 degree bend uh, from the masking's point of view. There's more of like a 45 degree angle here. And so you don't want that visible when you kind of cut that out. So if it's really a little bit closer to that 45 degree bend, you might wanna actually bevel that corner a little bit or, or make it 45 degrees rather than 90. Okay, so we've got our Sharpie mark laid out there. Let's go ahead and uh, go back to a normal view here. OK, 
Okay, lay that out. <clears throat> and then now what we're gonna do next is uh, disassemble this module. All right, so we've got the uh, polarizing film here that we're keeping on the right side, so I obviously don't want to scratch that, even though I have a soft work mat. So I'm going to lay this clean microfiber cloth down. Let's drag this up a bit so you can see. And then we are going to loosen these little clips here on the side. So you've got uh, one clip here, two here at the top, one again on the other side, two at the bottom there. All right, so you just kind of want to put in your tool there and kind of twist gently and the clip will come off. Okay, do it the same to the rest of them. And as you do this, you'll notice the display start to fade a little bit and eventually go blank, just like so, because you are separating the battery uh, from the module. Now you'll have the uh, world map here still be showing and the analog uh, hash marks still showing as well, just because those parts are actually um, uh, pre-printed onto uh, the polarizing film. Okay, and now once you have that all off, what you'll do is just carefully separate this out, okay, into two parts and so uh, that is still the 12, that's still the 6, and then when I open it like a book, that's that's the layout you should be seeing. So a couple things to note here. Uh, the spring that connects the module to the speaker, which is actually on the uh, case back of the watch. Let me show that to you. So there's that little round speaker. So there's a spring actually here. And that needs to make contact with that case back in order to produce the sound for your alarm and your mode selections. So that spring can sometimes come undone. And then there are so many holes here that it can be hard to figure out which one they go into. So usually, usually what I like to do here is just mark out that hole with a Sharpie before I move any further. So that way, if that spring comes undone, it's easy to figure out. I just take a fat tip Sharpie here. Go to that spring, push down, and then I'll make a little circle there. And then I'll take out the spring so you can see it. It'd be very delicate. You don't want to grip this too tightly because it'll fly across the room and get easily lost. So there's that spring. There's our little hole that we kind of outlined in Sharpie there so I know where it goes. And then that spring, I'm going to go ahead and just set that off right next to my screws because as we move all these parts around, again, very easy for that spring to get lost. Okay, now we're done with this part of the module for now, so we can set that off to the top, and this is how your uh, look out your work. Um, this assembly area should look at this point if you're following along. All right, now let's go to uh, this part right here. Got the little circuit boards. So you can just go ahead and gently lift on the sides here. You can take uh, something soft, probably non-metallic would be best. So I got my toothpick again here and I'm not touching uh, that part right there. I'm going towards this side on the right. Okay, and I'm just lifting up gently on that. I'm not running that toothpick all the way through because there's parts underneath there that I don't want to dislodge. And then separating that up, again, opening it up like a book, and this is how it should look. Okay. At this point, we are done with the circuit board, so I can go ahead and set that off to the top. And we're gonna grab a few other pieces here too. This part, we can set that off. I believe this is called the diffuser here next, so we can set that off. Okay, you're gonna have these two little white strips here at the top. So what I like to do is just flip this over Take something thin and just poke them out. So I need something just a little bit thinner than that. Take my hobby knife here and just carefully push those out.
Nope, those ones are kind of stuck in. Maybe I can just grab them from the back. Okay, well, they don't seem to be coming out easily on this particular model, so I'll just flip this over and go to the next step, which is to remove the display from this white plastic housing. You'll notice here that we have kind of this uh, kind of arched spring here at the six o'clock position. So if we turn this over like so, and we kind of pry in this direction with our left thumb, we can simultaneously push down with our finger to separate the display out like so, okay? So that'll loosen that up and then make this display easier to pop out. And then there we go, we got our little strips there popping out. So you've got one there at the top and then there should be another at the bottom. Okay, like so. Okay, and then what we do is just kind of lay these parts out at the top and I'll zoom out once again for you here. <coughs> Excuse me. So there we have all our parts laid out. Okay, now let's go back to uh, the display over here. So again, we're just gonna be cutting out this section over here on the top. Now I wanna make sure that this Sharpie mark is really dried before I kind of you know touch it because I don't wanna smear it across the whole screen. So I'm gonna take some painter's tape here. Just kind of lay that on the top there. Gently rub that down and then remove it just to get that part dry. Now, as you're putting a little bit of pressure on the display, you're gonna notice uh, some graphics pop up here. So let me, let me show that to you here at the top. Okay, you see that there? There's some graphics popping at the bottom. That's fine if you see that. In fact, while you're working on this watch, uh, right before you're about to put in the battery again, if you still notice those, don't worry. Once you do an all clear, the AC on the screen, which I'm gonna show you towards the end, it's going to completely wipe those things out. So you don't have to worry about that staying on. Okay, so now that we have that kind of laid out there, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get another piece of painter's tape and protect the rest of that uh, display there because I will be uh, moving my fingers around that. So again, I'll take some painter's tape here. I'll use the part uh, that I haven't cut because it's nice and straight. Just kind of lay that out just shy of that bottom Sharpie line there. Actually, I can take this towel off for now. Okay, and then take another one here and go just below that other mark right there. Okay, again, this is just why it's a little bit more work when you're trying to preserve the factory polarizing film because there's all this taping you have to do and you have to make sure that you don't damage the factory polarizing film. But again, I have other methods of doing this. Uh, this is just a new method in, in case you're interested. Okay, so we need to cut here and what that's gonna entail is a couple of things. We're going to first create a score line. Think about like a perforation on a sheet of binder paper. So I'm gonna take a straight edge. I'm gonna take my uh, blade there cut, uh, make a cut here, make a cut there, and then I'm slowly going to remove along those two perforated lines with a guitar pick, and then clean up the glue underneath that's holding that polarizing film on top, and then replace that with a brand new polarizing film in black. Now at this point, before you do this, it's important to note that you are going to be losing some um, details in your display by doing this particular mod. So uh, the crosshairs are going to be completely gone, as is the center black dot. That's just because the those graphics are pre-printed on the factory polarizing film. And because we're removing that, uh, there's no way to transfer those on to the new ones. So if that's a detail that you wanna keep, probably don't want to do this mod. Also know that if you want to try it, but you're like, oh man, I don't like it. Can I reverse it? Yes, you can go ahead and reverse it and change it back into positive, but you will still be losing those graphics because these are pre-printed. The crosshairs are pre-printed onto the factory polarizing film. This is, that's a good um, hint for any Casio digital watch mod that you're doing. Sometimes it's hard to tell which of these graphics are gonna disappear and which are gonna stay the same once you replace the polarizing film. So I'd recommend just doing research, asking questions on forums and watching some other videos to see which ones do and which ones don't. 
Okay, so in this case, we're gonna go ahead and uh, create our little lines here. So for my straight edge, I'm just using a, a plastic ruler here. I'm gonna line that up with the tape edge. So I can still see that Sharpie edge right there. Okay, make sure your blade is nice and sharp. Okay, try to claw your fingers on the left side just like you do while you're cooking. And then you're gonna draw this blade completely across. Okay, don't put too much pressure. I would say firm but solid pressure. Um, hope that makes sense. Uh, but let's go ahead and start here at that inner corner. And then draw towards the end. And you can just let this drag off. And so I'm doing one, two. I'm trying to find the groove of that line that I already created. Three, four, five. I like to go with five. Again, I'm probably putting, it's, it's hard to explain, but I'm probably putting double the weight of my hand each time I'm drawing this across. Okay. And we're gonna repeat the same for the other side here as well. Okay, now the other side, because I am right-handed, I actually have to put this ruler down on the display. Now that's okay. I don't mind if this ruler scratches this part of the polarizing film because it's getting removed and replaced. So that's completely fine with me. So I'm gonna put that down there. Try to go to that corner that I started at before. And then draw my blade across again. One. Two, three, four, five. Okay. We're going to get another piece of painter's tape here. Before you continue, go ahead and just put that down over everything. Okay. And then just that part, we're going to remove up and then do it again. And what I'm doing each time I'm doing that is I'm kind of picking up those little pizza, uh, those little pieces of the uh, polarizing film that I just cut off. So that way, uh, you know, you don't accidentally grind them uh, later on into the part of the display that you want to keep looking good. Okay, so now that that's in there, we have um, these two layers to deal with. Now, before we continue, just a quick analogy, the quick way to think about this is this whole display that we're working on, I want you to picture my hand on the left as that display. When I rotate this display to the left, I'm gonna rotate my fingers to the left, you actually have about three layers in there, with this layer representing the top layer here with those crosshair marks. This top layer is called the polarizing film, okay? And um, depending on its orientation, it can appear as either this way, which is what you call a positive background, or positive display with a gray or white, and then the numerals are in black, or you can have a different orientation of the polarizing film in which you have a negative display, in which case you have a black background and those white or yellowish numerals on top of that. So the polarizing film in both of those cases, positive or negative display, is exactly the same film. It's just the orientation of that film that will determine whether it's positive or negative. What we're doing here in this particular mod is we're actually uh, removing Moving this polarizing film here completely, cleaning up the glue underneath that holds these two layers together, and then taking a brand new polarizing film, putting it on there, but then turning it 90 degrees to the right or to the left to get the effect of the negative display. Again, if this was a negative display and I did the same mod, rotating it to the left or to the right would give a positive display, so it would be the opposite. Okay, now when it comes to doing this mod, a lot of people say, well, when you remove this polarizing film, if it's exactly the same kind of film and it's just a matter of rotating it, can't I just reuse this layer? You can't because the glue on here is so sticky and viscous that it's almost hard to clean that polarizing film off and you'll end up scratching it that it doesn't look good when you reassemble. So you have to use a new polarizing film in that case. 
Okay, so because we're gonna be working with some glue here that's pretty sticky, we wanna do both some chemical and mechanical advantage. Okay, so I always like to start with the chemical first because that makes the mechanical a little bit more easy. So I'm gonna take a uh, microfiber cloth here, just kinda lay that down. And let's zoom out just a tiny bit. There we go. And we have our display here. Let me see how that looks. Actually, let me get a new towel because I think this, this white is just too bright for the camera. I'll be right back. All right, I think this will be a little bit better for you guys. A little more contrast. And there we go. Okay, so we need to loosen up that glue. So what we're going to use is a chemical here, which you can just get at your grocery store, at Walmart. This is called Goo Gone. You can also use something called Goof Off. Okay, I'll put a link to the Goo Gone in the um, link below. This can either come in, this either comes in a liquid bottle or a spray bottle. It doesn't really matter which one you use. Okay, you just need a little bit there, probably about two quarters worth. Okay, and then you need some Q-tips over here. So the first thing you do is take your Q-tip, get it soaked up in that goo gone, and then you're gonna go to the edge here, and then you're just going to lightly dab it here on the edge, on the top and on the bottom. Okay, and what that's gonna do is allow the goo gone to kind of slowly work its way down here Okay, again, what's, what we're doing here is kind of putting that goo gone right in this um, layer here, and it's slowly dripping into the, uh, the edge, the distal part of that um, polarizing film. And what that's hopefully going to do is kind of loosen the glue just enough that I can wedge in my uh, guitar pick. And then once I get this in, once there's some purchase, I can move this guitar pick all the way down, because right now it's very hard to run this pick down because the glue is so sticky. So this is gonna help loosen that and, and give us an edge to grab onto with our pick. So while that's working, I usually let that sit for about five minutes. This is just a very basic plastic guitar pick. You can see here that on one edge, I actually even um, use the knife to thin it out even a little bit more. And this just makes it much easier and much safer to remove this. You have some people that like to take their blade and just kind of do the same thing because the blade, again, is quite thin. In fact, it's probably even thinner than the guitar pick. They like to kind of put the blade in there and then run the blade through. That's also fine if you want to do that. But of course, we're working with a little bit of force. We're trying to move against something sticky like glue. Anytime you're working with a lot of force and you got something sharp, I just think that is an accident waiting to happen. So why not just get something safer like a guitar pick? You can even take an old credit card, you know, one of those pre-approved ones you get in the mail, file down the edge or, you know, shave down the edge a little bit to get it like this guitar pick. And you can do that as well. Anything that's safe and comfortable will be fine. So I'm let that sit for about five minutes and then come back. All right, so it's been about five minutes here. We're gonna go ahead and try to loosen this up. So right here at the top, okay, this is the 12 o'clock here. This is the six o'clock here. So right here in the corner is usually where I like to start with my guitar pick. You can kind of drag this and you can hear the pick fall into that level. Okay, you hear that little skip. What that is, is actually the guitar pick going across the factory polarizing film and then jumping down to that middle layer. Click, click, click. And that tells you that you're at the right layer where you can start moving this pick in and getting this off. So we'll go ahead and jump down like so. And let's zoom in a little bit more here for you. And then I'll just kind of rock this back and forth. There we go. And you're waiting for that little edge to catch right there. You see it? Right there on the pick. And then what I'm going to do is, because the pick has a nice round shape, I'm just going to kind of rock this back and forth. Okay? Until I get about 
right there to that center dot on the hash mark. Then I'm going to transfer this pick a little bit to the left. And what I need to see here is I have to be careful. Remember, I have the rest of this display underneath, right? If the score line, this little cut mark I made, isn't deep enough, what's going to happen is as I'm running this down this way, it'll end up going too far and start removing this part of the display here, which I don't want. If that happens, I have to replace the whole polarizing film because the glue is going to be completely visible. But because I created a cut line here, what should happen is as I move my pick down, it should break along that line. Okay. So, but you need to be very careful here when you're doing this and you should see the pick break along that line. So right there at this point, I should be seeing it break and it's, it's not, it's not tearing at that line. So I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to grab my blade again and just run over that particular line just to make it a little bit deeper. Now there's already a groove here in the cut because I've done five passes so I don't need to use my straight edge anymore. I'm just gonna do maybe another five here. Okay. And then I'll probably do the same for this side because it'll probably be the same there as well. Okay. Now let's do this again. Let's clean up those shards that we just put down. And let's try to pick one more time here. You can also soak your guitar pick in that uh, goo gone a little bit, make it a little moist, because then you'll drive it down into that glue and make it a little bit easier. Okay, and then I'll just rock the pick back and forth, and there you go. You see how we, yeah, let me make it a little bit larger for you. There we go, we have a nice clean break right on that line right there. So now that I have a nice clean break there, I can move this the rest of the way down, just kind of rocking gently back and forth, like so. Okay. And then this part is usually easy because you can kind of bend it. Okay. And then just try to break it so along that other line that you made there. There you go. So that came off nice and easy. There's the part that we removed there on the guitar pick. So even though I'm gonna throw that part away, let me just kind of show that to you. So this thing that we just removed here, this is called polarizing film. So I know it looks pretty dirty. Again, that's just because of the goo gone and the glue, but that's how it came off, right? That's how it was when it was assembled. That's a positive display. If I rotate this 90 degrees to the left, look what happens here. We've got our negative display. Go back 90 degrees, positive. 90 degrees in the opposite direction, negative. So again, that's all you're doing. You're taking new polarizing film and orienting it 90 degrees to the left or right. However, it's important to note that the side that you're on is also going to be very important when putting on your film, and I'll explain that later. So for now, we can take uh, this part, and actually let's let's save that because that has a nice firm shape and we can use that to, uh, we'll dry that off first and then we can use that to trace. Our new uh, polarizing film. Okay, so with this part, you can see here, it's a little bit bright. That's better. Okay, you can see here that we've got lots of little glue clumps here, right? So that glue all needs to be removed. It needs to be completely clean. So we're gonna take our goo gone again and our Q-tip and I'm not gonna rub yet. I'm just going to dab and kind of mop all over this area. Just kind of keep it nice and wet with that goo gone. Okay, again, we're still in the chemical stage, so I really wanna let the chemical do the work. Let that sit for another five minutes. 
the longer the better. Don't worry about that goo gone dripping to other parts of the display underneath your tape. That's completely fine. Don't worry about that. Just put it there for now, put this on a flat surface and come back in about five minutes or more. All right, so it's been about five minutes here. So now we need to do is move into the mechanical stage. So we're gonna leave this area still soaked in goo gone. I'm gonna take my Q-tip and I'm just gonna gently move in circular motions to clean this area up. Okay, then once you feel like you've loosened the glue, you can kind of see more clumps here. I like to move those clumps into one corner. Okay, try to brush them off into the towel. And then I'm gonna take the corner of my uh, microfiber cloth here and just carefully wipe that away. Now you notice this as I'm doing this, there's really no sound yet, right? And I'll, I'll explain what that means later. I'm just kind of wetting it, rubbing it, creating clumps, move those clumps to one side, get them off, and then wipe off. So you want to keep doing that over and over until you start hearing a squeaky sound with either your cloth or your Q-tip. The squeaky sound means that the glue has been removed and you're kind of down to the bare uh, glass, which is why it's creating that sound, which also means that the glue is off and it's uh, the right time to stop. So this can take you a while to do. You just want to be patient with this. You also want to make sure that you're careful with your Q-tip because of course you know that the Q-tip is only soft on the tip. It has a hard root. So as this gets wet and worn down from your rubbing, you're going to get worn down to the root and you don't want to be grinding that root into the display. So I kind of like to use my Q-tip at an angle here and just put light or put firm but even pressure, not too hard. Okay, we're going to keep doing this over and over until it starts to squeak. So actually, this one, you know, it's always different. Sometimes this takes me 10 minutes. Sometimes it takes me five minutes. This one looks pretty quick. So I'm actually going to switch up the end of my Q-tip here. I thought I heard the sound already. Oh, yeah, there we go. pretty quick okay do it again Okay, once you feel like you've gotten all the glue off, go ahead and make sure you've got some good lighting above you. And uh, kind of rotate it in the light there, and then it'll show you parts that look nice and clean, like most of this, and then parts where the glue is still visible right there, especially along the edges, right? So this is almost clean, but not quite. Let's take one more look here. Okay, tiny bit here. And a tiny bit right there, too.
Okay, that looks great to me. So now we've got that all clear. So all we're gonna do is remove uh, the tape from the rest of this so we can dry up the rest of that because the goo gun will get underneath there. Again, we've been putting a lot of pressure on this so you're gonna be noticing some crazy graphics appearing there that's completely normal. Not a problem that'll go away when we do the, uh, the all clear. Let's rotate our towel to a clean side here. And let's just carefully dab the rest of this dry, like so. Okay, also don't forget to dry the edges, all four of them, like that, and the back as well. Okay, so now we've went ahead and removed that little corner for the analog clock. So actually I was wrong there when I removed the polarizing film. We still have the uh, crosshairs, but when we put on the new polarizing film and make it negative, you actually can't see them because the crosshairs here are in black and the negative display is in black. So of course it's not gonna be visible. But that's good that those are still there because, again, if you do this mod and you don't like it, just repeat this in reverse or repeat this but orient it in the other fashion so that way you get a positive display and your crosshairs will come back there. So <clears throat> this is kind of what your layout should be at this point. Okay, now before we uh, grab some new polarizing film and handle that, we've got that goo gone on our fingers, so you want to make sure you uh, wash those up uh, before continuing. All right, so this is the new polarizing film that I have. Okay, this polarizing film actually has three layers. Okay, you have the middle layer, which is the polarizing film. You have a protective layer on one side and a protective layer on the back that you peel off both of those kind of like a sticker uh, before laying it on permanently. Now you can get these in two variations. You can get these with a non-adhesive, meaning that neither uh, side of the polarizing film is sticky. Um, that's what I'm using right here. Or you can get it with an adhesive back, in which case one side is sticky. Uh, the benefits of having the adhesive version is it's easier to apply. You don't have to use any glue tape. You just kind of stick it down either onto the display or onto the masking. The disadvantage of having an adhesive back is if you get any air bubbles when applying it, it's near impossible to get those air bubbles out. You have to remove that film, cut out a new one, and put it back on again. So um, unless your technique is really, really good, you can go through quite a bit of time and quite a bit of polarizing film to get it done correctly. So I like to use non-adhesive because, you know, if uh, there's... There's no chance of air bubbles, and it's just easier for me to reapply if there's any that do pop up because the uh, tape that I'm using is double-sided, and it's very easy to peel the uh, polarizing film from it and reapply it properly. So when it comes to the film here, you want to make sure that you have the, um, the right side that you're going to be working on. So we're going to take our uh, display here. Okay, and let's zoom in. Okay, so how do we figure out what side to be on? Am I going to be on this side or do I flip this over to the back? So start on one side, okay, put it down, and then just rotate it. And if you start seeing gradient colors like there, you see reds and greens and yellows, then you're on the wrong side. Okay, you want to flip this over, rotate again, and this time you should be only seeing white or black. No gradient color. So there's our negative display orientation where everything is in black. There's our positive where everything is in white. So no gradient colors. Again, ignore all these weird graphics appearing here because I was putting pressure on the display. Those will disappear when you do the all clear. Okay, so now that we found the right side, how do I know what orientation to cut this in? Uh, like 
that looks pretty dark, but then it gets darker. That looks white, but then it gets whiter. So usually it's going to be within following the the angles of your of your sheet here, right? Usually uh, if you lay it on one side, it's completely at its most positive. And if you do it 90 degrees to the left, it's at its most negative. In this particular case, it's not that way. I think it's actually at 45 degrees that you get the most white. See, that is dimmer than that. And that is definitely dimmer than that. So it looks like it's at 45 degrees, which would mean that 45 degrees in the opposite direction would get us our most black, right? So there's our most black. So in this case, I want to be at 45 degrees. So it's usually within those parameters, 90 degrees or 45 degrees. And of course, you just eyeball it. When it looks the most black or the most white, that's where you're going to want to cut off. So I know that I need to be right over there, but I like to work from the corners to cut. So that way I don't waste. So I'm actually going to do it from this end here. And uh, you can already see I've cut out a bunch here. But again, I'm going to pretty much be, this is where the sheet used to be, right? So I'm, I'm kind of at 45 degrees right there. Okay. Now you have two ways here. You can take a Sharpie and just kind of trace over that little area there and just cut that out. Um, let's actually bring this closer because I don't need that much polarizing film. There we go. Okay. It can be a little bit hard to eyeball in this case because you're looking at black on black. So I'm going to take that little piece that I cut off. Like that, all right? Just kind of lay that over to get it in the right orientation, like so. Okay, and then now that that's in the right orientation, I can move this display to the side. Okay, and then just trace that out. So let's put a little bit of, oh, that's too movable. Just use my finger. Take your Sharpie here. This is a thin Sharpie and I'm just going to trace this. And it follows along that cutout nicely. like so. Okay, let's remove this part here. Set that off to the side. And then what I'm gonna write here is the word T. And the word T tells me that this is the top layer because remember, the back side of this is gonna give those gradient colors. So I don't want that. The T is gonna let me know that that should be facing me uh, when I reassemble this watch. Now, obviously the T is visible from the back as well because it's uh, transparent, but it's um, a lot duller than it looks from the front. So that's just how I'm able to tell which one is the front and which one is the back, All right? And then I will uh, just take a clean towel here, just. Put some pressure over that because Sharpies like to run and just dry that Sharpie out, okay? Then we'll take our scissors here and just cut this out. Like so. And there's our little piece right there. Let's trim this up a little bit more.
Okay, kind of like that. And then we'll just clean up our work area here. Just have some of these little bits of polarizing film lying around. Okay, so now that we have that cut out, we need to uh, put this on the masking. So we're going to take our masking here. That's what this part is. We're going to flip it over. We're going to take this part here. And remember that the T needs to be facing the top. So actually, we need to put it this way and install that right there. And what I'm going to do is just um, get a little bit of glue tape to these corners here and then just apply the film directly onto it. Now, some people can go ahead and cut out a larger portion of the negative polar of the uh, polarizing film to make it easier to stick on. The thing though you have to understand though is if you cut it a little bit too large, you're actually going to um, overlap with the factory polarizing film here and then it's gonna kind of put your film at an angle I, I don't know how bad or if that will even be noticeable but for me i want to keep it exact the part that i removed is the part that i want to replace um, but that's just something to note that if you do a larger cut here and then you reassemble the masking might not sit flush down completely because um, your layers are overlapping with each other Okay, so let's go ahead and um, take this part here and let's just see how much room we have. Now, obviously with this, we wanna make sure that, um, yeah, let me see where it's visible for you, there we go. So obviously you want to make sure that this uh, polarizing film is larger than that uh, that circle there because otherwise it's not going to be covering it. And you want to make sure that you have some free edges here on the polarizing film to put some glue. So I think just in the four corners, if I put a little bit there, that'll be more than enough to uh, to cover that down. Okay, so there's our polarizing film. Here is the double-sided tape. The double-sided tape is made up of uh, two layers. This particular brand is called uh, T-Rex, and I actually have a separate YouTube video on how to cut this out and apply it. I will put that link in the description below, so that way you can follow along there, since I don't want to repeat myself here. But uh, basically, the T-Rex tape has two layers. You have the tape itself, and then you have the protective layer on the top. Once you peel this off, Okay, it's sticky on this side, and then we have a protective layer here on top, and this is clear, transparent, and you can cut this to any shape that you want, okay? Okay, so I went ahead and already cut out four little pieces. And then I'm gonna put those on right now. So let's get this, I think that's a good zoom. Okay, so we need to put it to the corners here. Put one right there. And let's zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Now when you apply your double-sided tape, you wanna make sure that it's just a little bit um, away from that edge of this circle because if you put it right up to the edge and then you squeeze everything back down during reassembly of the watch this tape uh, obviously has some thickness to it so as you squeeze that down the tape will squeeze and expand out and then you'll start to see it here in the display which doesn't look good so by giving it you know like a millimeter or so on the edge you're giving it room to kind of expand out so that's one there's still that protective white layer that's why it doesn't look clear right now i'm going to remove that later sometimes a protective layer if you're working this small if you're working on a strip this small, just comes off on its own, like this one that I just removed. So this is what the actual tape looks like. Kind of like that. Okay. At this point, it's almost like a, uh, like a paste at this point because it's so tiny. And one more. Uh, 
Okay, let's get these off. There we go. Now, because this is almost like a paste at this point, you can actually take a toothpick and just kind of spread this where you need it to go. So again, keep it away from the edge of any openings on your masking. Okay. And if it's too far away from the edge, then you can move it a little bit closer with your toothpick like that. Okay, once you feel like you've kind of got it where you want it, go ahead and just tap it down. Uh, getting a little too close there, so let me back that up. Like so, okay. Then we're going to take our polarizing film we cut off. Again, that's the top where it's nice and crisp. And this is the back of that, right, which is dull. So before putting this on, remember this has three layers. So we need to remove the top layer because we're gonna be putting that part down onto the uh, glue tape. So right now I'm on the top, the actual top part of it. And just gently, the film itself is pretty delicate, so it's it's quite easy to scratch. So you want to be very careful with removing that tape. This one is really tough. You can feel the back coming off, but not... There we go. So there's that top layer. These are plastic. There's no teeth on these tweezers. So let's get a little grip here. Remove that one. Okay. And then make sure you know the orientation that you remove that in, right? You don't want to move your film all around at this point because you'll lose track of which side is front and which is back. So you'll take this and then just carefully put that down. Over your display. Now I didn't push it down yet because I kind of want to move Take a look at this in the light to make sure that we are fully covering the circle on all sides. So maybe move this just a tad to the right. And a tad to the bottom. Okay, and that looks pretty good to me. So once I feel like I have it in position, take another Q-tip or a toothpick here with a uh, blunted end and just kind of push down. You can also just use your fingers, but it's a little bit more precise. Just pushing down on that area with the tape, just secure it in, okay? There's still a protective backing here on the back, but we are gonna leave that until we get to that step for reassembly. So we can now move on to the um, colored filter part, actually, of this, uh, this mod, which is a lot easier than the polarizing film. So let me just clean up this area really quick. 
and I'll grab that yellow filter for you guys to take a look at. All right, so these are some big sheets of Lee's colored filters. Now, in some of my other videos, you might have seen me use something like this. This is called their swatch book, which has a sample of colors. Okay, this is just great because it gives you quick and uh, small reference. And then depending on the color you want, it gives you the uh, code name and the name. And then you can order a larger sheet like I have from a online retailer. So I'm going to put the online retailer for where I bought the sheets off of eBay. It's not Lee's, it's um, night, sound, and lighting. And these are the sheets. Uh, I don't know exactly the size, but this is quite big. It looks like uh, just shy of two feet wide and three feet across. And I just bought these in larger sheets because these are very popular colors amongst uh, my customers. But if this is your first time modding, you probably don't want to shell a lot of money on just one sheet. You want to buy that swatch book that I showed you so that way you can find the colors that you like first. Okay. So the yellow we have here is called, let's unravel this. I've got an orange in here, chrome orange. I've got fern green, and then here's my yellow here at the top. And I think I cut out the label, but this is called light amber. I think it's actually better than the typical yellow that you get from Lee's. They have multiple yellows, of course, because, but this particular one, the light amber has a nice contrast with the black numerals much better than the yellow i say so of course uh, once i'm done i always take a picture and I, I send it to the customer for their approval before sending it 99 percent of the time they like my choices if they kind of want it lighter or darker I'm, I'm happy to go ahead and redo it for them so we just need to cut out a small square here that we're going to be working with now you can cut you can take your uh, masking here and actually measure out on your big sheet so that you're exact me, I have a small container here where I keep um, leftovers of my filters, so I'm okay just cutting a big square shape here. Try to handle this with tweezers because it's uh, easy to get fingerprints on. And then just take a look at the filter right away. So actually, I'm, I'm putting my fingerprints on this because I already saw it in the light that this one is actually pretty scratched. Uh, probably just from the way it was stored. So you can see we have a big scratch, multiple big scratches here running down. This These filters are really, really delicate, so you have to be careful with how you store them. So because of that, I'm just going to throw that away. Let me take out the whole sheet, actually. And let me get something dark to put on the background, so that way I can see these scratches. All right, so let's lay this down here. Again, this helps to have good lighting. Just gonna put this underneath and just check for any scratches. Okay, so yeah, that whole panel here where the black mouse pad is underneath is pretty scratched. I don't know how that happened. So I'm gonna move up here. Okay, so yeah, up here on the top, this is not scratched. So that's where I'm going to take my uh, my cut from. That uh, Lee swatch book, by the way, because the filters are stored right on top of each other and you're kind of like moving them around, you're kind of swiveling them to uh, go through the colors. Those can get very easily scratched. Now, depending on the filter you use, those scratches may not even show up when you reassemble the watch. It really just depends on how uh, your preference. Uh, obviously, for me, this is a uh, customer's watch, so I want to make sure I get the best um, filter. But sometimes even a small hairline scratch that you see when you're cutting the filter out, depending on your type of mod, you may not even see it. And I believe... For those of you that are doing a hydro mod where you're putting silicone in your digital watch, you um, you actually, I think those scratches go away because of the, uh, the fluid that you're working with. Okay, so there's a small scratch on here on the top left, so I'm not too worried about that one. That one can be cut off because we don't need to use this uh, this whole bit here. Okay, 
And let's go to our masking uh, next. So let's just have an air blaster here. Because of static charge, these filters like to attract dust really easily. So I'm going to go ahead and put my filter now. Oops. Some of that glue tape is sticky, so got to be careful handling this. So I'm going to go ahead and put my filter down. Like that. And that looks like a good spot to do my cut with. There's another small scratch here on the left, which I'm trying to avoid. I don't want to touch the actual top or bottom of this filter, just the edges, because of fingerprints. So I'm just going to put a little bit of pressure here and then just kind of mark in Sharpie where I'm going to be um, cutting this. These lines are not exactly straight, but that's okay because uh, they're going to be cut and, and hidden from view when we reassemble. There we go. And we can take our filter here. Okay, I'm going to hold it by uh, the part that I'm not cutting. and then just cut out that shape that I had there. There we go. I'll probably need to trim this a little bit more, but let's just test fit this on for now. Okay, now what you wanna check when you put this in, number one is you uh, there's a little bit of a lip here on the top of the masking. There's a lip here and then another one here. It's like a raised piece of plastic. So one here, here, here and here. So you want to make sure that your filter actually sits below those lips, right? So, and then secondly, you want to make sure that these openings that you're trying to color are completely covered. You don't want to make sure that the, you don't want the filter coming just to the edge of it and saying, okay, that's fine. It's covered. It should really be overlapping more than the uh, cutout because when you reassemble the watch, if you turn the watch to the side, you're going to see that bare display if it doesn't overlap a little bit more. So I have good coverage here everywhere. And then of course you wanna make sure that this filter is not overlapping into um, your negative display filter over there. Okay, now at this point, because you can technically just sandwich everything together when you reassemble, I don't even have to put glue tape to uh, stick this filter down. However, um, for a customer I always do because you know, sometimes you have a customer that likes to play around. They like to disassemble their watch. If this filter falls off, they may not know how to put it back. So I like to keep it, you know, semi-permanent, so to speak. So now that I know I have the proper layout, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some glue tape. And just like we did here, apply some little strips of glue tape to all these little parts here. And again, if you don't know how to do that, go ahead and click on the link in the description on applying the T-Rex glue tape. Um, I'm just going to cut this video at this point to save some time. All right, so let's start putting this glue tape here. So just like before, you want to make sure that you're not all the way up to the edge of the uh, opening. Right? So right there, I made a mistake. I brought it way too far 
towards that opening. So let me That's the good thing about the glue tape. There's pretty much no residue and you can just lift it and reapply it. Okay, I'm not looking to make it pretty yet. I'm just laying it down and then I can use my toothpick later to um, spread it where I need to. Okay, that's a little bit too thick for that side. So let's apply this one to the uh, top. Okay, so you can see here, this top part is actually a, a little bit, um, top and bottom are a little bit thicker than the sides. So I need to cut actually some really, thin strips for the side there. That one's a little bit too thick, but I'll just roll it on itself and then spread that out later. Let's get one more here and one more there. And one more right there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Maybe a tiny one right there. <clears throat> and the, uh, the blade really makes it just so much easier to apply this than using tweezers. Really thin piece. Okay, I'll have to move that last one a little bit. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and spread this. So we can get a nice even area and then we can also get the glue tape away from some of the edges here, like that one. This one on the top looks good, so I can just go ahead and pat that down. Spread this one out a little bit. This one is good. Yeah, that looks great. Okay, we're gonna set that off to the side. Let's go to our filter now. Okay, let's just remember there are filters being laid down in that direction. All right, and then let's just remember which side goes where for our filter. So it's gonna go like that. 
Okay, before I put that on, I'm gonna get a couple of things ready here. Got my uh, air blaster here. And then I wanna remove this protective layer off the back of the uh, polarizing film. Just make sure not to touch it. Need something with some teeth. Let me get my other tweezer here. There we go. And then we've got our colored filter here. Go ahead and check for fingerprints. If you have any, you can use a microfiber cloth to wipe them off. And then right now I'm just blasting away any dust that might, uh, might be on the filter. Okay, and once that's done, go ahead and line your filter up and lay it down. All right, so I may have cut this not short enough, so it's writing up a little bit on that lip on the right side. I thought I cut it short enough, so I'm just gonna be careful not to touch any of the filters there. Just gonna gently lift up on that piece and just cut a little bit off, like so. And there we go, now we got it to fit. Okay, avoid touching the visible areas on the display, and then I'm just gonna lightly tap where my glue tape is. And secure that in place. And so now, we have our colors all laid out. So negative display here, and then this is going to be our yellow here. Okay, so because uh, the filters are um, on the back side, I can lay this down this way and then start to reassemble everything. So we are in the reassembly phase. So before you move on from here, you're going to want to make sure that this is kind of the layout that you have um, uh, with your parts. Okay. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna take this part right here and let me grab the parts we need to make this easier. Okay, this part right here is going to have uh, that little curved shaped spring at the bottom. So that's gonna be arranged like so. The long strip is gonna be at the top. The short strip is gonna be at the bottom. And then we're going to take our display, just make sure to just grab it by the edges there. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is actually install our display. So we're going to take this piece, turn it like so, take our display, and then right here, there's gonna be a tooth here and a tooth here in white. You wanna fit the top of that display just underneath those two teeth on the right side. Okay, then your display is gonna sit up a little bit like that. Then you're gonna to wanna to pry with your bottom finger on the bottom here, and then fit the bottom of this display underneath that third clip on the left side. So I'm gonna use a microfiber cloth here so I don't fingerprint the display. Just kinda of gently, don't wanna to pull too far back because you'll break that plastic. Gently pull back and then set this down. And then you can see here that the one, two, and three teeth are sitting on top of the display. And that's really what's holding it in place so it doesn't fall down. Okay, next we're gonna do, again, this is a soft work area. So I can just go ahead and set that down gently. 
That's still the six o'clock, that's the 12 o'clock. We're gonna take these little strips here and insert them in. And then make sure you push them as far down as they'll go, like so. Okay, completely fine if the back of this uh, part of the display kind of looks a little bit messy. You can wipe that up if you want to, but there's really no need because it's not going to be visible. As long as there's nothing wet, that's what's important. And you're going to take this part. This is the diffuser. Okay, on the diffuser, you'll notice a couple of landmarks here. You'll have two big teeth at the bottom and two small teeth at the top. The big teeth go to the six o'clock position. You'll also notice that the teeth tend to project in one direction and they're flat on the other. So there's the projection on this side, it's flat here. So the flat side is gonna go down touching this part and the big teeth are gonna be towards the bottom at the six o'clock. So that goes right there, like so. And you'll take this part here. That's pretty self-explanatory. Left or right doesn't matter, it's all the same. Put that in, it just kind of fits into its cutout shape. You're gonna take this part. Now the black square needs to go in between these two black parts. So I'm gonna invert this over. And when I invert this over, these two contacts should be towards the bottom, not towards the top. This will be the six o'clock. And then you'll push that down. And then right here and right here, you're gonna notice the little white teeth pop up. See that right there and right there. So that tells you you have the proper fitment for that. And you're going to take this piece and we're going to go to our spring here. Remember that little half circle or that little circle we made in black here on the left. Okay, that's where you're going to insert your spring. Now the spring actually is thin on one end and thick on the other. You're gonna grab it by the thick end and then you're gonna insert the thin end into that little circle at the top there and just lightly tap that down. Okay, I'm gonna leave that the way it is. You'll notice that these two contacts here line up with these two contacts here. So we're gonna take this part, invert it over and push down those clips here in silver that you removed at the beginning you're going to want to clip them back so two on the top one on the left two on the bottom and one on the right there you go like so okay then we're going to take uh, this part and we're going to take our watch Okay, and get something that's black, put it underneath. We're going to lift up on our case here. Okay, we wanna make sure that we don't have any dust on the inside, or at least not see any dust. So what I like to do is have a black background. I need to remove this just for now. The black background helps to contrast any white dust that you might see. If you do see any dust there, what you can do is just um, take your air blaster and um, lightly uh, clean it up uh, from upside down. So I, I usually put it from underneath, do that, and then the dust will fall with the gravity. Okay, so that looks pretty clean. Take my protective film again, put it over, turn this upside down. Now we're gonna take our masking here. Now away from your work area, go ahead and use your blaster again to kind of get out any dust that you might see on the front or the back. Again, um, you wanna be gentle with applying uh, the duster because you don't want to blow that filter off. Okay, then we're going to insert this down. Remember that the analog clock goes towards 
the uh, top left if this is the 12 and that's the 6. So, like so. Okay, lightly make sure that sits flush inside. Okay, then you're going to take your display over here, your module, and again blast that with your duster away from your work area. Okay, these pushers, you need to make sure that they're pushed all the way back out. They're spring-loaded, so they should reset on their own, but just double-check that. And then put this back in. Just make sure you have the right orientation. Now, when you push this in, it's initially not going to sit in all the way, and that's just because the pushers are below these little silver tabs here. One, two, three, and four. So put a little bit of pressure with one finger, and then just lightly push in on those tabs, and you'll feel the module sink into the case, like so. Okay, great. Now at this point, you're going to do a hard reset. So you're going to take a paper clip, kind of bend it, cut it, and then make one end longer than the other end. Then you're going to look for the AC hole, the all clear, which is right here. You're going to stick the longer end of the paper clip into there. And then simultaneously, uh, touch the short end of the paper clip to anything that is uh, silver. So usually like right over there. So AC, hold it there just for a split second, okay? Then let go, and then that should turn on your, um, that should reset your module and your clock should be running. So let's flip this over and take a look. So because we've reset the clock, everything is gonna be set to 12 o'clock. Of course, 12 o'clock on the analog is going to look like one single hand there, so you won't see two hands, right? But let me get a good camera angle here. You can see that we have this nice yellow filter here, okay? I don't see any fingerprints here. I don't see any bubbling. It looks nice and even, no scratches. And then the analog clock, I don't see any air bubbles. So I don't see any scratches. There's that seconds moving right there, that small little dot. And then right when that passes the 12, you're gonna notice one of the hands separate. There you go. And so there is your minute hand at the bottom departing from the hour hand at the top. Let me see if I can, I'm gonna set this to the uh, user's locale, the time, but just for now, let's just set a different time so you can see the hand layout. So there is our, I'm sorry, the inner one is the hour hand. This larger one is the minute hand, so it's 2.01, and there's our seconds that is going to correlate to the seconds over here. So everything looks good. So now that I know that everything looks good there, we can go ahead and reassemble this watch. So let's put the protective film back, put this back there. Again, I need to check these pushers, put a little bit of pressure there. I always just like to check my work before I reassemble the O-ring and the case back, just, you know, if there's any problems there, I can, I don't have to unscrew anything. You're gonna take your O-ring here, Remember that little notch there at the top? Right there, that's gonna go to the uh, 12 o'clock, so it has to go there, it can't go anywhere else. So it goes right there. And gently push down that O-ring. There should be a nice little glisten to the O-ring, as you see here, which means that it's well lubricated. If there's no glisten in the light, that means it's dry, so you wanna take a little bit of silicone oil and just, you know, lubricate that o-ring but again you don't want to stretch it so don't pull the o-ring through your fingers that have oil to lubricate it you're going to stretch that ring you just kind of want to lightly dab that o-ring with maybe a q-tip take our case back here we're going to put that in uh, this orientation here on the back and lay that down gently 
and then just push and hold with one finger and then we're gonna get our screws and reassemble everything. Okay, I don't like to fully tighten these screws, just once they hit the case back, I still keep them kind of loose. So do that to all four. Now what that'll do is that'll just make the case back grip the uh, case enough. But before I fully tighten, I want to check around the seam between the case back and the case to make sure that the o-ring is not visible if it's visible that means it's being pinched and then the water resistance rating of your watch will be uh, impacted by that so now that that looks good i can fully tighten these don't over tighten because the um threading of the case is resin or plastic so it's very easy to strip and then fully tighten right there okay then let's get actually let's use a little bit of silicone oil here now i didn't cause any of these scratches on the back that's just the way the watch arrives from casio it's it's a 15 to 25 dollar watch so it's just to be expected but i'm going to go ahead and just kind of clean off any fingerprints i might have i'll take a little bit of oil just a very small amount here and just clean up this case back for the customer i always like things to look nice And so much better, right? I think that's just a nice little touch to do. It takes five seconds. And then any extra oil, I'll just clean it up. Silicone oil, so it, it absolutely will not hurt the watch at all. Okay, let's go ahead and flip this over. Now, before we continue, let's go through all the buttons to make sure that they're functional. So uh, we'll stop, we'll start with the bottom left. First thing I want to check for is sound. I hear it. That tells me the spring was correctly attached. And we went through all the modes, no problem. Now we want to test these two buttons on the right. So I like to go to the timer for that one. Start the clock with the top right. Or is it the bottom right? Yeah, bottom right. Stop. And then clear top right. Push and hold, I believe. Is that the one? Oh no, top left is the, is the clear. So we still need to test this top right one, which is the backlight. Let's turn off the light for that and see if I can get that in focus. Let's peel off the plastic here. That'll make it easier. There you go. So I don't have the best camera for nighttime viewing. But uh, that's how your backlight will look, a little bit orange with that yellow filter there. And then you can see what's really cool there is you can, with the backlight, you can still see the hash mark on the analog clock and all three of the hands. Oh man, it's too bad that <laughs> you can't keep the watch looking like this all the time. That'd be a really cool mod. Would probably consume a lot of battery but it would look really cool so anyways we have all four buttons working let's go ahead and get this attached oh super bright there sorry about that let's get this watch attached i've removed the plastic permanently from the face of the watch because i'm going to put my own protective layer before shipping it out because once you peel this it's really hard to keep it permanently stuck back on so you might as well toss it after you're done using it Let's reattach this and uh, I will readjust the date and time for the customer at a later time. 
but definitely before shipping it out. So that way when he receives it, it's ready to go. You just put it on, no need to adjust anything. Okay, and let's take a look at our work. So, All right, so that is it. We are all set. Um, if you guys are modding these and you're shipping these out to friends or let's say customers, this is what I like to do. I like to take a piece of painter's tape, obviously brand new, take that out and then just put that over there. I usually go a little bit extra and I, I trace the exact shape, cut it out, write a little thank you note there for the customer. Uh, but just to show you what I do, a little painter's tape is great because it leaves no residue, gives you nice protection so that way when they take it off, it looks good as new and everything is all set. So that'll do it for today's mod, everybody. Again, uh, this is completely reversible. If you really don't like the way this looks, you just do the reverse process, turn that polarizing film 90 degrees in the opposite direction, and now you've gone back to what you used to have. So everything is completely fine. The colored filter, obviously you just remove that if you don't like that, or you can switch out the colors, but a very simple, easy mod to do. I will put down as many of the uh, materials in the description as I remember. And um, if you could please go ahead and follow this channel, give me any comments or suggestions, I would greatly appreciate it. I also have an Instagram. Uh, it's in the description at the very top. In there, I have a lot of pictures of my mods. Usually, I post those every Monday for Monday mods, but I have a lot of my watches, my uh, everyday carry um, items, just a lot of fun stuff that some of you might relate to. So if you could check out that page as well, I would greatly appreciate it. And as always, guys, have fun. Uh, take it slow when you're doing these mods. Remember, these are very affordable watches, very easy to work with, so don't be scared about attempting. Feel free to ask me or the community any questions. And as always, I will see you on the next one.